The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert, proclaiming a gospel of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locusts and wild honey, and this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. A couple of weeks ago when I first read these readings in preparation for today, I noticed something that I've never noticed before. Now in the gospel it talks about uh, John, you know, a voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his path. That's a reference back to Isaiah. And I always thought of this as this story about John the Baptist, right? He lived in the desert. He had camel hair and a leather belt, and, and uh, he ate wa- uh, locusts and wild honey. And so I always thought this is a great story about John coming and talking about the Lord. And then I read this from the prophet Isaiah when we were actually reading what it was quoting. A voice cries out, In the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in, every mountain and hill made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain, the rough country a broad valley. Let me read it one more time. A voice cries out, in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord. Isaiah is talking to you and I, not to John the Baptist. Yes, John the Baptist was in the desert and he did those things. But he's talking to you and I today because we live in a desert. The world out there, the secular world is a desert. There is no holiness, there is no joy, there is no brotherly love. We're living in that desert. But you and I are the ones to cry out in that desert about the goodness of God, about the love that He has sent us in His Son, because we have this 2,000 plus year history of celebrating Advent, of celebrating Christmas, the coming of our Savior. We're not like John who was still waiting. He even asked one time, are you the one? He knew he was, but he wasn't sure. Are you the one? But we know he's the one. We believe. John baptized with water and he talked about Jesus, who will come and baptize in the Holy Spirit. You and I have been baptized in the Holy Spirit. We are temples of the Holy Spirit. We have become the body of Christ. We're his hands and his feet. We're his faces and his eyes. We're his voice crying out to in the desert that we live in. 
that God so loved us that he sent his only begotten son. And we're in Advent when we're supposed to be preparing our hearts for his coming. Yes, the beautiful moment of his coming and we have 2,000 years of celebrating his birth. And yes, in the world, guess what? Again, we're crying out in the desert. We're crying out, Merry Christmas, when everybody else is saying Happy Holidays. Because we know that the world has been changed 2,000 years ago by the Savior. And every people celebrates it. Some of them don't even know what they celebrate. But here we are, the second week of Advent. We're supposed to be pausing right now and reflecting on, yes, the coming of Christ in his birthday, but also the second coming of Christ. When he comes and takes us with him to heaven, we don't know the day or the hour that that will happen. And we must prepare. How are we doing in our preparation? How are we doing in our reflection? We come together at Mass, we're in community, we pray, we sing, we listen to His Word, we receive His very body and blood, and then we're to go out into the desert and fill the valleys and make them plain, take the hills down and make them smooth, take the crooked paths and make them straight. We do that by loving God and loving our neighbor and loving our enemy and loving ourselves, smiling at the person in the checkout line, loving on our kids and our grandkids, loving on our parents, loving on our co-workers, caring for the other. That's what they don't do in the desert. They don't care for the other. For the most part, we humans, sadly, this is a kind of a default position to become self-centered and narcissistic and greedy and selfish. That's what's out in the desert. We're the voice that's different. We as Christians, as Catholics, living our faith are to be the ones that say, no, God loves you and so I love you too. God cares for you so I care for you too. Not just the ones that love us back, but also those that are downtrodden. This is a beautiful time of the year when people start to think about, not just here, but out there, caring for those in need. They put a little bit in the Salvation Army bucket at the store when the bell ringer's bell ringing. They may give to somebody for a turkey dinner. They may do something to volunteer. They start to think about that. That's your and my job 24-7, 365 days a year. We're supposed to say, in a way, Merry Christmas. Christ has come all year long. That's who we are. We are in the desert crying out, shouting like it said in Isaiah from the top of the mountain, fear not to cry out and say to the city of Judah, here is your God. That's what we're to be doing. That's what God called us to do. And we do it in little ways. Why? Because there's 8 billion people in the world. There's 1.2 billion Catholics. There's about another billion Christians that aren't Catholics. So there's, what, about a quarter to a third of the world's population are believers? We, each doing our little part, loving on those in our circle of influence, caring for those in our families and in our workplaces and in our friends, that we change the world. That's what this moment of Advent is about. We're preparing for this day of Christmas. So when we celebrate the Savior's coming, we celebrate it with this 2,000 year history of knowing that God is here, He's with us. And we also celebrate it knowing that He's coming back and that we must be prepared. And what is our mission in life? Right? To go to heaven 
and take as many people along as I can with me. It looks different for each one of us. So I ask you, how's your Advent going? There's still time. We just got started. Happy New Year, right? It's our new liturgical year. How's it going? How are you doing on your, on your uh, New Year's resolutions spiritually? If you need to work on them, work on them. If you need help, ask God for help. One of the ways that we can celebrate this is not only here today at Mass, tomorrow night, 5.30 to 7, here at St. John's. It's our annual Advent Reconciliation Service. It's a come and go from 5.30 to 7. We'll have Jesus on the altar so you can come and pray for an hour and a half. We'll have five priests here hearing confessions. We can hear a lot of confessions in an hour and a half with five priests. Some of them don't serve here, so you could come to somebody besides me if you're worried about coming to me. And you can get this, let's call it junk, out of your heart. Maybe you haven't been in a year. Maybe you haven't been in five years. Maybe you haven't been in 25 years. Maybe you've never been since your first commu communion when you did a confession before that. Guess what? This is the year. Why? Because I want you prepared. Why? Because we don't know when Christ is coming. And we must be prepared. And I want all of us to be prepared. Somebody said today, I, you know, you've heard me probably say, hey kids, how you doing? And I say it to everybody. And they say, yeah, we're a 70 year old kid. And I said, well, eternity's a long time. So we're just getting started. In fact, in that reading from Peter, it says, you know, this is Peter, the first pope, one of the apostles. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. That brings to mind this joke that I heard. A guy read that and he says, Lord, I know one day is like a thousand years and a thousand years is like one day. He says, Lord, give me a thousand years worth of wealth and success so I can go proclaim to the world how good you are. And the Lord goes, hmm, give me a day to think about that. <laughs> we don't know when that day will come. May we be prepared. May this be the advent that we look back on in the future and go, wow, I took time to reflect on being the one in the desert proclaiming God's love. Proclaiming from the mountaintop how much He loves each of us. That was my moment when I realized what God created me for. So that in a way, we can every day of every year say Merry Christmas, the Savior is here.